music, motivation, and positively obnoxious. That's me. It's the Tony Gabbard Show! Hey guys, this is Tony. You're listening to the Tony Gephardt Show. My guest today, her name is Jessica Tyna, and today's format's just a little bit different. We're kind of doing it NPR style. Nevertheless, I don't want to waste any time. If you like the podcast, please share it with your friends. If you don't like it, then hey, leave me a nasty review. I'll smile and maybe I'll read them on uh, on air. Anyways, nevertheless, we're going to cut right to the interview. Vroom. So that really depends. Sometimes I also have this uh, irritating thing called school that I need to sometime pretend I'm doing. So either I go to class where I sit and listen half on what the lecture or the professor is saying and then the other half on, you know, my computer coding because I'm, I'm, I have a tendency to be super bored. So yes, I do actually end up coding at least for most of the time, eight hours, if not more a day, just because that's just my default I do when I'm bored. And just, or if not like actually writing code and reading about code or reading technical stuff, I'm all, always in that kind of space. But yeah, like if I'm, you know, when I wake up, if I don't have school, I usually just, you know, wake up, watch some, a little, like go through all my notifications, go through my emails, go through Slack, see, see what's happened while I've been asleep because other people are awake <laughs> when I'm asleep. So yeah, after like an hour of that or so, I um I get some food and then sit on my computer and, and do tech stuff, answering emails, stuff like that. I don't know I all, I've always played um video games as a kid, like children's games, and yeah, I've always done that and and done like a few fighting games here and there on the PlayStation Two and and stuff like that, but. The first time I got into coding was really when me and my friends was, uh, was playing Minecraft and we had our own like server community here in Denmark that we hosted, had an average player base of like, I want to say 300 players per day. So I, I figured out that you can code like server expansions to, to the server like system and that's how I got into coding at the very beginning that's fun so here we have we have kind of two organizations primarily we have we have just a blind organization which is known as the old people's club because there are more <laughs> there are more blind people that are like above the age of 50 and 60 than there are young people and then we have like the youth group which is like from zero to 36 where i've actually been a board member and done volunteer work and stuff like that. Those two things really like cover all blindness stuff. Okay, so um, first, just to explain what the GitHub Accelerator program is and its purpose, it's, it's launched by GitHub, which has it in its name. And the goal of the GitHub Accelerator program is to try to find other sustainable ways of basically going full-time and funding open source projects. So projects where the source code is freely available for anyone to view, browse, and download. Because you would think, oh, well, you can't really sell it if you can just view the code yourself. But there's, yeah, there's the whole market about that and you, you can, that's the short version. But so GitHub Accelerator is a 10 week program where they've taken 20 projects and go through this program. And then at the end, like the projects all get a, a $20,000 stipend on top of that. And that's, that's what the GitHub Accelerator is. And apparently, apparently they had over a thousand applicants. And yes, is that they took 20 in to, to the first like cohort of projects when they, where we get like networking contacts, talks from other industry leaders in open source governance management different types of monetization there's really there's a lot so just like how i got into it is pretty much like everyone else um back in december i sent in an application which included me sending in you know who i was my project in a like free four minute video of me explaining why my project is awesome and funny story normally like originally they had scheduled their acceptance emails to go out in um in february and i hadn't heard anything so i just i just imagine oh you know i didn't get it you know yeah. 
But then in like mid late March, I I woke up to the email from a person from GitHub saying, "Hi Jessica, you uh like the normal like we're happy that you applied and after over a thousand email like a thousand applicants, uh you have been your project has been one of the one selected from the for the GitHub Accelerator program." And I just I woke up to that email and my entire I had to go to school that day and my entire morning would just i couldn't even form words because the the first thing when whenever i thought about something it just came out as like me, 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 me. i couldn't even form words well not yet but i'm i think it'll come once i start to going to all all these different conferences but what i have met is a bunch of people that i didn't know about that basically live the life i want to live of being able to program and go and speak at conferences, travel around the world, and just being able to to have these people that I didn't know existed, but now I have like free, basically free access to that I can just message and, and be like, hey, teach me, please. <laughs> I want to know everything. <laughs> it is really an experience that a project I, I had that got accepted into the GitHub Accelerator was originally um, well, it was a part of a bigger project I had that actually helped uh, the blind and visually impaired. It was a a markdown editor with um, like PDF support that could convert basically any document you had to markdown and back again to any document you might need. Um, the, so that's that was my project, and then the project that got accepted into the GitHub Accelerator was like a dependency of that project, the actual conversion bit. So that that's kind of how I want to do it. I want to I released that the the editor a couple of years ago as a proof of concept, and, and I kind of want to take get get back on that. That's that's the plan anyway to make a version like official version one, if you can say that, and have that. So like we can basically create slides and we can create like word documents, PDFs, HTML that looks as pretty as everyone else but the difference is that it was a blind person making it and you wouldn't know the difference as an example i i was live with github not that long ago because well they they wrote out to our group and it's like hi we have an open spot does anyone want to uh, come on our live stream and i was like me <laughs> i can do it so i i did I mean, yeah, that, that's my, that's pretty much my other plan is just whenever they have an offer for us that's not required, I'm still just saying yes, 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 give me, give me, give me, give me all of the things. I just want my name out there, basically. <laughs> so all the good things that have, that's happening right now can continue after the accelerator. Those people, yeah, that's like, um, that, that's messaged me say, ah, oh, you're my, you're my role model. I was like, I've never had that and I don't even know what I would do with, that those kind of messages was like i'm i'm no role model like as we talked a little about before uh before the recording it's like when i sit with those people like at the accelerator like i get imposter symptoms so hard <laughs> because these people are geniuses i feel so dumb compared to them with the whole imposter syndrome a, a prime example of that was um after my live stream with github um, my my phone kind of blew up a little bit, but one specific email that I I, I got was from a like technical project manager, pretty high up in an American company. Really encouraged me to apply to speak at a specific conference. But it was just the the fact of like having someone that's been in the industry from like twenty years. <laughs> coming to you and say you are a badass and then you know she offered to help me write my proposals um, and I sent it to her the next day and she was blown back at my um, my proposals she was like thanks I don't even know how to how to process this compliment yeah I don't think it's really set in yet like with all these uh, like right now it's just you know all of them are just word documents that i'm sending off through these different conferences but i, I don't think it's really truly sunk in yet that like in in six months time i can i can be standing on a stage talking to like twenty thousand people that all came to hear what i had to say i don't think that's really sunk in yet <laughs> after like what did i what did i sign up for <laughs> oh my god going up on stage and just seeing oh shit there's like 
10 people, 10,000 people here that, that came specifically to hear what I had to say. It's like, what? It's, it's not really, no one is really sending me per se. I'm applying for the conferences and if my talks get accepted, they give you a free pass and in, uh, to the conference. And in most cases, they pay for your flight and accommodations, but in other cases you have to apply for it. So, but no, it's not really a secret. It's um, because like you can, you can buy tickets to the conferences right now. Um, so it's not really a secret per se, uh, which one I'm applying to. I'm going, I'm planning on going to Spain twice. Actually, there's two conferences in Spain. There's in the UK, in, Lithuania, in Germany, and in North Carolina. Yeah, most, I wish I could uh, link up with, uh, because most of the GitHub people are in America and they, yeah, but like these conferences are hosted by various different organizations and it's all, you know, the, the them that decide, you know, obviously they, the primary thing of a conference is networking and different talks. That's basically more or less all that conference, all, all of the, that these conferences are. So they of course are interested in having talks that it is what's like look good because like, the, because good talk equals, you know, selling tickets but most of them are, are really happy to hear from uh, like new speakers and speakers with diverse backgrounds and stuff like that and hey i'm a new speaker with a uh, with a diverse minority background which is uh, just uh, like when, when i had to like click like which like minority groups and stuff like identify with it's just like yep 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 <laughs> it's like yeah i like are you a new speaker? Yep. Do uh, do you like have a disability of any kind or in another minority group? Yep. Oh, like, are you a like woman and other or under un underrepresented gender? Yep. As they like, keep like pressing all those buttons, like, oh man, this is so weird. <laughs> From at least the numbers I've seen, yeah, it, it, it is very male dominated, and conferences do various things to try to even at the playing field but as as some of my my peers have said it's like when they've gone to conferences and gone to all these panel talks where it's like five six seven eight people like sitting on a panel it's just a panel of like of white dudes <laughs> and that's like that's their words not mine it's like it's a panel of like eight white dudes yeah like i, I look forward to this day i can say yeah we just secured like i don't know five million dollars of funding last week and we are on track to another 10 or i don't know That'd be nice. That's a really good question because I I originally like I came for from a place where I was like I I, I couldn't see myself in five years. Like it just I, it didn't exist for me um, because of um, losing the rest of my sight and stuff. That's very traumatic. I've had several uh, periods of my life, long periods indeed, where like I haven't even been been able to see myself what what I like was where I was gonna be in six months much less like five or ten years but then now to sit here and like my my uber contact quant like wrote to me and asked me if i had time for a meeting this week and usually i'm just able to write back immediately say yeah yeah whatever like this time is fine whatever but for the first time in my life i actually have to check my calendar like can i squeeze you in <laughs> Let me, let me see if I can squeeze you in, champ. Uh, <laughs> it is a really good feeling. But then I just look at my calendar. It's like, I have GitHub Accelerator here and here. I need like this interview here, this live stream here, this uh, article here. But, but I don't know. It, um, so my dream, I don't know how many years it's going to take, but I would really love to just be able to work like at a company where I either get paid to do uh, my own open source projects or just be able to do it like as a self-employed. But the most important thing is definitely like if money wasn't an issue, just be able to travel around the world to conferences it would be nice. Like being a digital nomad was, would definitely be nice. Like be like, oh, I have a friend in uh, 
I don't know. I have, I have a friend in the U.S. somewhere I haven't seen in a while. Let me just, like, fly over there and work from, like, his place for the next, like, three or four weeks before I fly to another place and another place and just keep doing that, basically. Yeah, especially if I'm, you know, self-employed working on my own projects because then I don't even have a boss or a team that I need to answer to. Like, if they're, like, if they are primarily in, like, in, the Euro in Europe, I wouldn't be able to just as easily you know fly to australia or fly to the u.s because of time zone difference but if i'm self-employed and like pay my own bills like from my own money that you know that i earn as a self-employed individual then i can work whenever and wherever how long time do we have <laughs> okay well let me count um that, this is such a flex but yeah give me a minute to count them up <laughs> so we have java php I'm also listening kind of in the order I learned them, just by accident. Python, C, C++, Rust. I feel like I'm missing some. There are some languages that's not counted as actual programming languages. I know CSS, HTML. Oh, JavaScript. JavaScript is a, is a language, apparently. JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, SQL. Again, SQL is not really a programming language, but that's besides the point. Moo, I know Moo, JSON, YAML, XML, Haskell, Go. I have to learn Go for work. See, the thing is, like, once you know, like, two languages or so, it's just relatively easy to pick up more because the concepts are generally the same. It's just the syntax. There's a lot. I, I don't even, I, I don't even know. There's of course the whole how many do I actually use because of all these languages. This is just like all the languages I've used since I started like 13 years ago. I started like when I was, what, 10, 11, something like that. What the easiest is, well, it, it really depends on what you want to use it for. But generally speaking, Python is always a great language. People that, like I know a lot of uh, blind people specifically struggle with indentation. Um, because that's how you do things in Python. You don't do brackets and stuff. You do it by indenting code. It's really not that hard. So just <laughs> like it sounds a bit harder than it is, but it just give it some time. Everyone, even sighted people struggle with how to indent, indent codes uh, correctly. That's not a, a blind specific thing, but it does teach you something very valuable because if you want to work in this field, you gotta realize that it's you, like, if you get into a company and you're, a, you're a software engineer, you're going to be the only blind software engineer there. And I can tell you this much, they, the, the side of people you work with, regardless of it's, if it's Python or something else that don't require indentation, they're going to indent it anyway, because it looks pretty and it's more readable to people with working eyeballs. It helps you both because Python is an easy language. You can do a lot of things with it. And it kind of forces you to do indentation because it's required in Python, but that's also like other people, like sighted people in other programming languages still use because it's easier to read for them. And the hardest, well, I kind of want to say C, just like plain C, because you need to write a lot of things yourself. And if you're not careful, you end up crashing your entire computer. It's gotten much better though, like before, like 10 years ago 15 years ago apparently you would think like, you could you could crash your computer but now it kind of kind of stops itself before it shoots your entire leg off that's probably the hardest because you need to dive into a lot of low level technical stuff that is not just code like there's a lot of things going on behind the code with like memory and stuff and you have to keep track of but it's gotten better but also yeah like that's pro that's the hardest, uh, but again, I feel like everyone says that that's the hardest. It really depends, you know. I have my website, jessicatiner.com, which basically links to all my other stuff, GitHub, my Twitter, Jessica Tyner on most places, GitHub, Twitter. But yeah, my website links to everything, both like current and when I do something new, I have a, a whole page of talks and interviews where you can see all the live streams I've been a part of and all the talks I'm going to be giving at conferences, podcasts, articles written about me, stuff like that. And you can 
you can like see my email you can see my github see what i'm coding yeah everything is basically there one page for all all of them on different places on the interwebs <laughs> so i use uh, ai every day um, i don't just copy and paste what the ai tells me but i use it to automate the mundane tasks because that's even before ai really was a big thing that's always been one of my passions is just automate everything which also kind of leads into the whole thing you said with uh, sighted people and just like you you need to automate as much as you can in your workflows because if not you're not going to be able to keep up but that that said specifically just yeah do what i do just, just go and do the things you want figure out how you're going to accommodate it to your disability after with me and i know that's not ex at all what you asked <laughs> but like but like but like with uh with the conferences as an example like i don't know where they are i don't know how to get there i don't know anything but i want to speak at the conferences and i'll figure out how to do it after like it's it's the same with when i flew to finland at, at the start of april it's just i had no idea i'd never flown on my own so it's just just do it don't let the blindness hold you back because everything is going to work on wake up fine so just do what you want and figure out how to tailor it afterwards for the longest time i have been thinking okay i'm blind what can i do but that's that's the wrong way of looking at it it's like okay what do i want to do and then after it's like yeah, i'll figure out how that works with my blind afterwards want to give a huge thanks to Jessica Tyna and her story of success, especially as someone with a visual impairment. We can learn so, so, so much. If you like today's episode, be sure to share it with your friends and leave a review on Apple. This is the Tony Gebhardt Show, music, motivation, and positively obnoxious.